It's Mark Reardon for C-Speak, the language of executives, sponsored by PNC Bank. I'm here today with Michael Scully, regional president of PNC Bank, and Nancy Friedman, president of The Telephone Doctor. Nancy, thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. Tell me exactly what is the telephone doctor? What is the telephone what doctor? What is the and telephone why am I doctor? Here? Yes, yes, exactly. We are an international customer service training company. We help customers communicate better with their customers. So, bottom line, we have five divisions, and I'm going to go over them quickly because some people think we're just one thing. We have an online training for people who like the online training or have an LMS that like to do online remote training for offices around the country. We have a DVD library which has 18 programs. We have a small group trainer for you know doctor, lawyers, merchant chief who call up and say, I got 12 people. We need help. So she goes out and does a small group. And then we have the event training, which is me. I go out and speak at large associations, corporate meetings, sales meetings. And we have Telephone Doctor University. So those are for people who want to have the culture, mentality, and philosophy of Telephone Doctor come in and learn how to use our products much more effectively than they probably are now. So yes, we're an international customer service training company. Take me, though, back to the beginning. How did all this get started? I was working with my husband, and one day I got frustrated with my insurance agent. So I picked up the phone, and I called him, and I said, Michael, cancel all my policies. No small job. We were his largest account. So he's, my gosh, Nancy, what happened? I said, your people are terrible. They're so rude. They're so unfriendly. And I don't want to be treated like that. So he asked me to come over and show them what should be done. So I said, okay. So I went over to his place and I showed him. I said, you know, we say please. And one one said, Hilda, write that down. That's a good one. We say thank you. We say you're welcome. Have a nice day. I don't think I spoke 15 minutes. Didn't think a thing. I happened to have lunch that day with uh, the newspaper man from Davenport, Iowa. And he said, what'd you do today? And I told him about calling Michael and canceling the policies, yada, yada, yada. He says, would you come and would you show my guys what to do? I said, yeah, okay. So how many people do you have? He said, 300. So I I wrote a half-day program and I flew up to Davenport, Iowa and delivered four programs. The first program was delivered only to managers because the general manager of the newspaper said to me, if this program is to work and I want it to, it must start at the top. It must start at the top. It must, it must ripple down. It cannot ripple up. And so I delivered the first program to all the managers of the Quad City Times in Davenport, Iowa. And when I was done, the editor of the Quad City Times came over and he stuck his finger in my face. He said, you know, you're very good. You, you sure have some cures here. He said, I'm going to call you the doctor. I'm going to call you the telephone doctor. And I came home and said to my husband, somebody call me the telephone doctor. What will we do? He said, let's go get it registered. So we've been running around Smart. the country training corporations ever since. Tell me, what, what is the biggest frustration from your standpoint of customers in corporate America? Simple. We're just not friendly enough. Bottom line, callers, customers should be treated as a welcome guest when they call or walk into a business. And you know as well as I do, sometimes we're an annoyance or an interruption or feel as though we're an annoyance or an interruption. So if there was a one-minute customer service doctor, it would be be friendly before you know who it is. The smile has got to come before you know who it is. Uh, You and I as radio people know that you can hear a smile. Radio people instinctively know that. So we need to teach our employees, too, and and it starts at the C-suite. It starts right up there at the top. The smile comes from them, and as simple as it sounds, it is be friendly before you know who it is. It's amazing how how much that makes a difference, too, because even if someone's calling you and maybe they're not in the best mood, it sort of diffuses that situation, doesn't it? Almost 100 percent. Not 100 percent, because there are people that don't want to be happy. (laughs) Right. But (laughs) the bottom line is that when and even when I have a complaint to make, you know, the first thing I say is when I have a complaint and I go into a store, I say, I need you to be in a good mood. So I'm controlling the conversation, and invariably I get, okay, I am. What can I do for you? And therefore, I I get a lot more what I need than than some of my friends do because I'm controlling this conversation, A, with a smile, and then just a quick question. I need you to be in a good mood. So, Nancy, that's interesting that being friendly is the biggest frustration of customers in the corporate America. How does that work with in the digital world? Oh, digital world. Well, I need to ask you, what do you mean by the digital world? I mean, that's a big, it's a big word. Um, I guess the bottom line is people are people are people are people. And what we've found is that, and I believe the figure is correct, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, over 50% of all online chat, whatever you want to call it, if that's the digital part of it, um, end up in a phone call. Why? Because people can't get what they want. They don't feel, they feel frustrated. It's too hard to do. It's not an easy access type thing. And so getting back to the phones, people say, you know, the heck with it. I, I'm just going to close this out and I'm going to, I'm going to pick up the phone and call. Even on the chat lines with so many places are going now to a chat, it's hard to get the right information. Very little now, obviously, you can order online, but very little gets it done like a phone call with a person, with the words, with the soft skills that we're training with. 
Nancy, so much has been made recently about the generational differences within the workplace. Uh, what impact are the millennials having on the business communication and, and, say, customer interactions? That the impact is they are a challenge. But the other impact is, and when I do programs and I speak all over the country, all over the world, one of the biggest thrills I get are when these, these and I call them kids, from 19 to 30 years old come up and say, you know, thank you, Mrs. Friedman. I don't. I never heard that information. I didn't get that information in school. They want to learn. They they are almost sponges, if you will. And are we training them the right way? That's that's my question. I don't have the answer to that yet. But uh, these are smart kids. They're growing up in a world that you and I will didn't have, so to speak. They're just different. We need to not accelerate their differences, challenge and value their differences. All right, Nancy, so let's talk about this. What are one or two leading-edge approaches that C-suite level executives can apply to their customer interaction? Number one, and I ask all my audiences this, how many of you have ever stopped to call in and ask for yourself a service or a product to your own organization, large or small, to see how our customers are handled? I'd be three, four hundred people in the audience, four people raise their hand. So my first assignment to C-Suite is you must, you cannot fix what you do not know. You must call up and ask for yourself a service or a product. Then the second item, you got to have a training program of some sort, of some sort. On-the-job training isn't going to cut it today to make you better. Somebody coming in saying, well, I used to do it this way, shouldn't be there anymore. This is the way we're going to do it. So yeah, two things, call yourself ask for a service or a product, and then have some sort of training program. Those are the two edges that most people don't do. So what can a CEO or other people in the company do to close that gap between where the company is and where it needs to be? That's a very good question. I would say we get an awful lot of calls to our office saying, I'm Joe Smith and I'm president. I just called my own office and it was terrible. Come to us because it's this is what we can help. And it's always what kind of training do you, program do you have, Mr. Jones? CEOs need to learn that there are there's material out there. There are good good programs out there. Yes, I'd love it to be ours, but there are all sorts of programs from free to expensive to middle class, which we are. Uh, of training program, online training, DVD training, um, just sitting by somebody and saying, "Here's how we do this," and I got to go. I got to go out to lunch now. That's not training. That's not training. So training is organized way of learning something, a process, learning how to do something. The benefit to telephone doctor is we have a language of telephone doctor. So we don't just say be nice. We hey, we will show you the words that accentuate being nice, et cetera. Is everyone, though, able to be trained? Because you would think uh, that sometimes this is based on personality, right? Yes, everybody can be trained. Does everybody want to be trained would be my question. And there are some people, A, who know think they know it all. B, don't have the time to do it. Um, and time is an excuse. Time is simply an, is an excuse. And excuses are useless. They're useless to your customers. They're useless to your kids. Not having a training program is just an excuse. You can have a training program. So, Nancy, what exactly is a call center? I'm glad you asked. Um, a call center is a group of people who help people. Some companies have a call center within their own company. And it could be just four people answering phones. Well, you wouldn't call it a call center. You'd say, it's our office staff. But it's a call center because they call in and you get help and you hang up and you say thank you. There are some large corporations that take it either offshore or to another city, and that's called outsourcing. And the benefit to outsourcing is probably it's less expensive. However, I warn my clients who do take their call centers outsource, find out from those companies who are handling it because now you've got a third party involved. You get somebody else handling your customers. That's not always good. It's not bad. So find out what kind of training they're using to train their customers. You're layers apart from a call center, A, that's offshore. But bottom line, there are calls. I'm working uh, next week with a, a very large conference. She's got 95 people in her call center. I said, how many, call, how many people in your call center? She said, well, our call center is right here in Springfield, Missouri, and we have 95 people. So they have 95 people helping their insured, helping them. It's a call center. A telephone doctor, I got 23 people. I got 23 people helping customers. Do I have a 23-person call center? Yeah. But you think of a call center as a separate building with people offshore, and a call center is simply a place where people can go to get help. What should a CEO look for when they're hiring someone to join their executive team and lead the customer service aspect of their business? Condition of employment, grounds for termination, and exercising their option. You see, when you put a place of customer service into place, when you put training into place, there can be no, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. If you're going to do it, you're going to do it. It's, it's a condition, a telephone doctor, it's a condition of employment, grounds for termination, and we exercise our option. If you're not going to follow our plan, we don't need you, we don't want you. And that's a hard thing. A small business can do that easier than a big business, but a big business can do it 
if you go in on a on a different mentality maybe and say, look, we need consistency here. We have five locations, and I want the phone answered the same way at every phone within this organization. How many phones do we have, Susie? Well, we have 37 phones, all right? Every phone that's picked up will be answered the same way. Then you decide how you want it. We can help you, but you may be different than what I want. So consistency is critical to get the game going. Condition of employment, in other words, it's got to be, this is how we live our life. Nancy, I think that's a perfect note to end on. Thanks for coming in today. For our entire interview with Nancy Friedman and more C-Speak content, go to camox.com slash news. C-Speak, sponsored by PNC Bank.